And we begin this morning with the third day of the Republican National Convention. Today's theme, Make America Strong Once Again. Republicans are set to focus on foreign policy and national security, including the ongoing wars in Ukraine and in the Middle East. And the speakers are expected to dig into the Biden administration's handling of global issues. Last night, Trump's vice presidential pick, U.S. Senator J.D. Vance, was alongside the former president watching the speeches. And tonight is his night to shine as Vance will address the convention to formally accept the nomination and introduce himself really to the country. Also yesterday, former President Trump's rivals took to the stage and in a big moment, Nikki Haley gave her stamp of approval to Trump. But for all the talk of unifying the party, there was actually less talk about uniting the country during yesterday's speeches. And we heard attacks on Democrats, the president and the media. Donald Trump has my strong endorsement, period. I'm here tonight because we have a country to save. And a unified Republican Party is essential for saving her. They support open borders, allowing millions and millions of illegal aliens to pour into our country and to burden our communities. Our message to black Americans is this. The media has tried to convince you for decades that Republicans don't care about your communities, but we do. When President Trump was in the White House, Americans had more money and lower prices. Our borders were secure and our laws were enforced. CBS News campaign reporter Torian Small joins us now from Milwaukee with more on what took place yesterday, what to expect today. And Torian, we know it's significant during any party's convention when former rivals get behind the presumptive nominee. What was the core message that you heard sent to Republican voters yesterday? Well, especially, Errol, with people like Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis previously mum on whether or not he would join uh, Donald Trump on the campaign trail after he suspended his bid for the presidency. But Nikki Haley was particularly interesting to hear from yesterday. Her message to Trump defectors basically was this. It's time to return home to the Republican Party. She also told the Republican delegates in the room that it's not enough to just win over her supporters. It's now time to reach across the aisle and bring in Democrats and independents to the party, something that uh, she focused on when she was seeking the presidential uh, bid. But what's interesting, Errol, I talked to uh, former Arkansas Governor uh, Asa Hutchinson here this week, and he said uh, it was discouraging to see so many jeers for uh, former uh, Senate minority or Senate minority leader Mitch McConnell. He was scared that maybe Haley would receive the same icy reception. We didn't see that. Ultimately, we're seeing Republicans looking to turn the page and now coalesce, all of them coalesce around Donald Trump. And I guess that's why tonight is interesting, because for the first time, people will see uh, Senator J.D. Vance as Trump's VP pick. He will address everyone gathered there. And he had been a fierce critic of Trump, reportedly describing him as Hitler to a friend. What can we expect from his speech uh, towards so many people who actually don't know who he is? Yeah, so this will be an introduction of sorts. He is a freshman senator, probably more known for his memoir, his wildly popular memoir that eventually became a featured film. Uh, but this is his opportunity to introduce himself, not just to the Republican Party at large, but also to the country. A lot of people will be tuned in to see who exactly is Trump's pick. Why did the former president pick him as his running mate? And again, he was up against a lot of well-known, established Republicans, Marco Rubio, uh, Tim Scott, also a senator, uh, and former governor uh, uh, Doug Burgum. Uh, but Donald Trump ultimately landed on Vance because of his appeal to a younger base as a 39-year-old freshman senator, but also his uh, ties to the Midwest, also from Ohio. A huge uh, play to win back the Rust Belt, some of those Midwest states that might have flipped, like Wisconsin and Michigan, uh, could be crucial to Donald Trump's 2024 coalition building. We'll see how he does. Torian, thanks so much. As we've discussed, immigration was a top issue yesterday at the RNC. Speakers slamming President Biden's approach, and they really doubled down on support for Trump-era policies. CBS News immigration and politics reporter 
Biden and Harris opened it up to the entire world. Prisons are being emptied. President Trump and a Republican majority will repass H.R. 2, the strongest yeah. border security bill in decades. We will lock down the border, and yes, we will finish building the wall. And I say this as the kid of legal immigrants to this country. That means your first act of entering this country cannot break the law. That is why we will seal the southern border on day one. Under Joe Biden, migrants are coming into our country by the thousands every day. We have no idea who they are, where they end up, or what they plan to do. And let me remind you, Kamala had one job, one job, and that was to fix the border. Now imagine her in charge of the entire country. CBS News immigration and politics reporter Camilla Montoya Galvez joins us now from Milwaukee with more on this topic. Camilla, we, as we know, yesterday's theme was making America safe again. Um, the 24 Republican Party platform specifically mentions the migrant crime epidemic. Those are th their words. And we just heard some, from some speakers on the topic break down for us the specific policies Republicans are pushing. We heard a reference to H.R. 2. Good morning, Errol. The Republican Party and former President Donald Trump are promising a radical shift in U.S. immigration and border policy if they come to power in 2025, come next year. That includes the largest deportation operation in American history. That has been a promise by former President Donald Trump throughout the campaign, but it is now also part of the official Republican Party platform. That platform era also includes militarizing the border through the deployment of troops there to stop migrants and the flow of fentanyl into the U.S., as well as a return to Trump-era border policy, such as the Remain in Mexico program that, as you know, required migrants to wait outside of the U.S. for their asylum cases to be adjudicated. Separately, former President Donald Trump has vowed to end birthright citizenship error for the children of undocumented children to deputize the National Guard to deport immigrants and also to invoke the Alien and Sedition Act of 1798. And yes, 1798, Errol, you heard that right, to deport immigrant gang members. So clearly, former President Donald Trump believes that immigration will again fuel his return to the White House and now, so does the Republican Party. Let's drill down then on some of the data. U.S. Customs and Border Patrol uh, reports that arrests for illegally crossing the southern border are down some 29 percent in June. That's the lowest of Joe Biden's presidency and partly because of his crackdown. And CBS News polling shows 74 percent of all voters believe Trump's policies would um, decrease crossings at the border. So how critical for both sides will the messaging be on this topic as far as who is um, making progress? Well, look, Errol, immigration is set to play a major role in this campaign. Poll after poll has shown that it is a top concern, if not the top concern among American voters heading into November. And it is certainly a top area of concern for Republican voters in this election. We spoke to some delegates here at the RNC in Milwaukee who expressed concern about perceptions that the border is chaotic, disorderly, that there is a lot of public safety issues tied to the record numbers of migrants coming across the border, and that there's a sense that the U.S. is being taken advantage of, that there's a lot of illegality coming across the U.S.-Mexico border. So it is a major concern for Republican voters. It is unclear how big of a role it will play for Democratic and independent voters, but the Biden campaign's message on this issue arrow has been that President Biden is offering a more balanced approach to immigration than former President Donald Trump, and that that is reflected by the recent executive actions, actions rather, that he took on this issue. One of them, Errol, as you highlighted, restricted asylum severely at the U.S.-Mexico border for those crossing illegally and the other that he issued weeks after has now allowed or will allow the undocumented spouses of U.S. citizens to get a green card and eventually U.S. citizenship. Such an important topic. Camilla, thanks for that update. We appreciate it.
So take a look at this, the ear bandage. It may be the new fashion trend at the RNC after Trump sported one Monday night in his first public appearance since Saturday's assassination attempt. CBS News senior White House correspondent Ed O'Keefe caught up with an Arizona delegate who made his own. This is Joe Neglia from Hello. Tempe, Arizona. Tempe, Arizona. This is your first convention? Uh, well, the first one I attended. I was elected in 2022, but that one was canceled because of COVID. And I noticed what you're wearing on your right ear. This is the newest fashion trend. I'm getting this going. Everybody in the world is going to be wearing these pretty soon. It's the latest thing. My wife calls me, tells me I dress like an engineer, but I'm setting new fashion ground here. So. And you just made this in your hotel room today with an envelope or what? No, I folded it up on the, way, on the bus on the way here. <laughs> Did you catch that? Setting new fashion ground. Uh, and a reminder, we have complete coverage of the Republican National Convention all week long. Special coverage begins on America Decides tonight at 5 p.m. Eastern.